Hi, heroes. I'm Stan Lee. And man, I hope this is as big a thrill for you as it is for me. But I'm here with two of my favorite people in the comic book business, in fact, in the whole world. Ring-a-ding Romita, who hates that nickname, <laughs> Johnny Romita, and Johnny Romita Jr., and I'll kill him for wearing that red shirt and getting all the attention here today. But um, Johnny, Johnny Sr., you're the guy who, I guess, you go back as far as I do at Marvel Comics. We've worked together on 50 million projects. As far as I'm concerned, you're probably not only one of the best artists in the business, but certainly one of the most versatile. I don't think there's a type of strip you haven't done, and magnificently. And Johnny Jr. is threatening to be better than you are. And not only that, he's following... Well, we were just talking about something before we started uh, the taping here, where you had created the Punisher costume, and now what is it? Well, let's show the Punisher first. Which, which of these is the Punisher? That's the Punisher. Right? Punisher here's, here's the Punisher, the Punisher War Zone. Now, you're the guy, I wonder if we have a good picture of his costume in here. Of the Punisher? Yeah. yeah. He's in this. Well, <laughs> this is a reasonably, I don't know how much you see of the costume, but that's our Punisher, thanks to John's design. Now, what is it you're doing that's, a, that's very similar? I have a character called Shotgun, and I, it's kind of uh, uh, another version of Punisher, as, as far as I'm concerned, but it's the African-American version of the Punisher. And he's just a... Oh, here uh, he is. A very bad guy. Now, didn't you have another picture of him somewhere that... Uh, yes, in, in the was book. It one of the books? Let's see that one, too, because I think you get a better... He looks a little more He's a bad, good one. guy, if you'll excuse the expression. What you mean is he's bad. Yes. B-A-A-A-D. This is he. Yeah, and I, I have a feeling that this guy is going to be a very popular Marvel hero. It's funny, we have a number of black superheroes. They have become incredibly popular, and there are a number of them now being developed for motion pictures, and who knows, he may be the next. Now, there was something else you had mentioned that you two were doing that was kind of coincidental. Well, we, you and I had worked on the Green Goblin right. many times, and John did the updated version of him called the Hobgoblin. The Hobgoblin, Goblin, which that's was right. A little bit more severe. But that character. was that wasn't fair because it was such an easy costume. I just yeah. based it on the Green Goblin. You guys did most of the work, and I got credit for redesigning the character. But you know, it's funny. We um, we better watch what we do because it doesn't matter what we did. Yeah. He's going to find a way to <laughs> embellish on it and And I'll take all the credit it. for it. Well, of sure. course. I'm afraid we're stuck with that. <laughs> hey, John, let me ask you. What was the first thing that we did together about a million years ago? Well, I worked for you. Uh, uh, back in the uh, late 40s, early 50s. He says, for me, he bossed me around all the time. Well, uh, but I, w I was ghosting for you for a while, but, uh -huh. but that was before the, the, uh, the explosion in 1960 with the Fantastic Four. Well, what were you doing? Were those romance strips? We did romance, we did war, we did westerns. I did yeah. a western series for you called The Western Kid. That's right. We did uh, every uh, science fiction, That's right. some mystery yeah. stories, and uh, I got a great uh, foundation course there. And then uh, when I, after I left the distinguished competition uh, <laughs> doing uh, 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 romance stories for a long time. I came back in 1965 and we worked on Daredevil together. That's I right. thought he yeah. was a, I thought he was a transient. He was up in the, in the attic for three or four days. Come back. <laughs> He'd come back with a beard and dirty fingernails. I didn't know what he was doing. He had no no I interest in my career. I thought he was a drunk career, or something. Really. I don't know. While well, I was doing those nondescript characters, That's he true. had no interest in my career. As soon as I did Daredevil, what was the... he suddenly realized he had a father. It was Daredevil, <laughs> it was Daredevil number 12. It was with Casey. How do you cover. remember those because things? Because it's, it's, it was like the first thing that ever stuck on my mind. I was so used to yeah. seeing uh, women kissing men and, and, and balloons. <laughs> and he, was, the he was even doing the, right. he was doing the lettering. Yeah. I didn't know what he was doing. And I would just, I'd be bored and I'd go back down the stairs. And then all of a sudden I came up one day and he was doing Daredevil number 12. Right. I think you were doing the, oh, you were working on the cover, weren't you? Yep. He yeah. was working on the cover, and yeah. the, the logo Kazar was on it already. And I asked him, I said, what's going on here? And that guy doesn't have a chance, because Daredevil is surrounded by about five uh -huh. of the plunderers, uh -huh. men, and Kazars. And, and he explains the whole thing to me, and explains who Daredevil is. And I think the, wow. the, 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 the light bulb hit me on top of the head, just like that, you know, yeah. boom. Suddenly, and I, this is it. Suddenly I was a respected parent. <laughs> and well, I, you know, show and tell at school from now on. It's <laughs> really funny. When Johnny came to us after leaving D.C., I um, wanted you to do Daredevil and adventure strips, and everybody said to me, well, you can't let him do that. He does romance yeah, strips. Does story, yeah. <laughs> and I said, you idiots, this guy is an artist. It doesn't matter what he does. Did you John remember? Report and think you had disappeared he and I died? died. Yeah. John <laughs> Port, he thought I oh, He Lordy. said, I'm sorry, your father died. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and then, remember, Steve Ditko had been doing Spider-Man magnificently, and then when he 
decided he didn't want to do any more Spider-Man, and we had to look around for, he was just tired of Spider-Man, we had to look around for another artist. Who did I pick? I figured, well, there's one guy I can always depend on, John Romita, and again, everybody said, John draws these handsome, heroic characters, these real macho-looking, great-looking guys, and here Peter Parker is just kind of a wimpy, nebbishy, nerdy kid, and you can't have John do that. He'll ruin the strip. <laughs> and Steve Ditko is so stylized, and John's style is so different. Mm. And I guess, I guess that's what's so really great about me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I want you, him Stan. to do it. And do you remember the first few strips you did, it really looked like Steve's artwork. I don't yeah. know how you did it. Well, I was trying to ghost it. Because, yeah. frankly, between you and me, I thought I was only on it temporarily. Yeah. I well, didn't you tell him? Back. I was he tell you you were doing two, two pretty stuff. That stuff was too pretty. You oh, used yeah. to tell me. Stan More than once doing you told me stuff. I did them too, too handsome. Well, I had to keep you on the straight. Now. <laughs> you finally gave up and said, okay, if that's the way you're going to do Peter Parker, let's do Peter Parker. Well, you know Parker what happened. First. No, no. Your first few were just like yeah, this. Yes, exactly. Then you began to backslide. <laughs> then, in my infinite wisdom, I realized <laughs> that nobody can do his best artwork or her best artwork unless the artist is doing it the way he or she yeah. wants to do it, the way True. he feels it. So I figured, okay, it's going to be your strip. Little by little, we'll have to let you get into your style. It yeah. took a while. You were real good about it. You didn't immediately do a Ramita. You were a sport, too. Yeah, but you slowly got into it. And how many issues did you do? I did about six years. Uh, the only thing is you used to sprinkle in a lot of other emergency projects. At the yeah. time. Captain America, Fantastic yeah. Four. We couldn't, have, we couldn't have stayed in business without you. Any time there was an emergency, call Ramita, you know. And uh, you were always I was also there in the office, remember. Yeah. I, was, uh, I was available. That's available, absolutely Available right. Jones. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's right. Because most of the artists were freelancers. We couldn't get rid of you, though. Right. You were always <laughs> there. <laughs> and you know, you're right. I didn't, you thought Spider-Man would be a temporary very job. Very, very because sure. I was afraid to tell you I wanted you permanently because I was afraid you wouldn't want to do it. So I practiced my usual deceitful methods. John, just do one more issue. Well, come on, one more. We'll find somebody. Don't yeah. worry. Can I can already you, knew it. It was six years. Can I tell you the things he used to say about you? When How you can I home? stop you? Uh, <laughs> to get bleeped? <laughs> no, you better not. Well, oh, I, know, I couldn't believe that this. Steve Ditko would walk away from a three-year success. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I thought for reasons. sure in three yeah. or four months he'd come back and just take it over yeah. again. So, but he did. Was I, I was the lucky. Well, Marvel was the luckiest company in the world because Steve was so great and he got that strip off so magnificently. And then we had you who put your imprimatur on it. And it, it did better than ever. And then the people later on did a wonderful yeah. job. There's something about We've Spider-Man. had a good run on that book, yeah, including John on. Jr. Did yeah. it for a few months. Now, speaking months. of John Jr. in the red shirt, <laughs> who's getting all the attention, <laughs> what, what did it feel like? I mean, when did you decide you wanted to be an artist? Was it after you saw uh, uh, your dad do Daredevil or what? I, it wasn't a, a specific day. I knew I wanted to get into it, but I didn't know if I was going to be an artist or not. Read, I started reading it left and right, and that's why I started coming up to the office. I wanted to just get, I wanted to jump into it. As far as being an artist, I, I didn't think I would ever be good enough, because you always have something to compare yourself to. Yeah. And as I got better and better, and I realized it was the only thing I could do, um, I said, maybe I should be an artist. And he kept on saying, you're crazy. Don't do it. Be a construction worker. Be a painter. Don't you don't know what it's like out. working for that guy. And I used to well, watch him kill him himself yeah. seven days a week. And I said, well, I still think I could do it. Same business, and right. he used to tell me, don't do it. And I, I realized that the only thing I could do, um, I was too short for sports. And <laughs> <laughs> But you remember, Stan, that he suggested a character to us uh, called the Prowler? Yeah. And you gave yeah. him credit. He was yeah, 13 right. years old. And we did it in spite And of he was walking this high off the ground for about a month <laughs> because his name was in the books. And that was the way he got launched. That was that's once he got a taste of he that. He tried he still he tried to talk me out of it several oh, times. Yeah. Many and times. I, I wouldn't listen to him, but then how many sons listened Suicide, to that father? Yeah. It was a little trick I learned. Instead of paying people, you gave them a little credit in the book. <laughs> and that went on for years until before they got wise. You remember? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, how old were you when you decided when when you started drawing? Um, I, I would think I think I was five or six when I was actually doodling, Son and then I started guy. getting serious in high yeah. school. When you're in high school and you draw anything that's not stick figure, people think you're yeah. a genius. Yeah. So your ego gets pumped in high school, and as I got better and better, and I literally drew more than I did anything else. I would on the back of my books and everything, just like everybody else. Did you criticize it, Johnny? Actually, he never let me look at his stuff. He used to say, "I, I don't think it's good enough to show you yet," and he never showed me any artwork. He came to work uh, up at the office uh, summers. And uh, he helped out uh, doing sketches. He worked uh -huh. for 
for Saul Brodsky and uh, Marie Severin, and uh, uh, I never hired them. They did it. They, they did it behind my back. And this was anti-nepotism. Right. Of I, I refused to put him first, in that spot. That's <laughs> the term I got. Scott yeah. Edelman came into the office and said, I don't believe in nepotism, but I don't believe in anti-nepotism. Yeah. <laughs> he said, funny, so yeah. I'm going to give you something yeah. to do. And he yeah. gave me some six-page Spider-Man um, backup story. Well, you know, in a little while, did. in a little while, because I want to keep our viewers in suspense, <laughs> we'll be going over to that drawing board, and I think it'll be interesting to see how the two of you draw and how there's a great similarity, but yet a difference in your styles, which I find very interesting. Johnny, the way you draw, to my mind, is absolute perfection. It's clear and clean and crisp, and I always loved it. Everybody loved it. The way you draw is more in the style that they're doing it today. It's sort of the cutting edge, where it's got a little more emotion to it, a little more excitement to it. And uh, they're both good styles, but there is a difference. One is a little bit the way it was. One is the way it is now. The funny thing is, I know that if I said to Johnny right now, OK, I want you to draw it the way he's doing it or the way all the guys are doing it today, you know, it might take you an hour or two before you can catch up. Mine is, my I'm style still, is, I wonder about that. My style is a deadline style. Whatever comes out yeah, on time is OK. <laughs> I never was conscious of the way it looked. Yeah. But I imagined it as his stuff or John Buscema's stuff when I was doing it. It, it was up here. And when it got out my fingers, it looked like my stuff. I was really upset with that. Yeah. I know but it was, you it's the deadline style. He made no style. bones about it, Stan. Yeah, yeah. He never tried to emulate me. Yeah. And I think that was a great idea. I did up here. It just never came out that speaking, way. <laughs> speaking of a deadline style, I, I, I've told this story before about you, Johnny. I don't want to embarrass you. But you know, I was always, <laughs> Leave that to me. But what's wrong with embarrassing him? So I always used to say, if only you draw faster, because you're so good, I want to give you more strips. Which, of course, is that you don't tell a guy who's working you're so good because he might want more money. But Johnny, if you gave him a compliment, that was good enough. <laughs> that was in lieu of money. Anyway, right. he always used to say, I'm drawing as fast as I can. I'm not as fast as those other guys. And it wasn't true. You were as fast or faster than any artist in the business. But I used to tell you, you're too much of a perfectionist. <laughs> this guy would draw a picture that anybody else would have framed and he'd say, well, that isn't quite right. I'll do it over. In the meantime, I'm waiting for the strip. No, I want to make it better. I'll do it over. And I used to say, your worst drawing is better than anybody else's. Let it go. And you wouldn't do it. But I guess you have to hand it to you. You were, you were a perfectionist. Couldn't help it. The problem is you were married. See, yeah. if you had been single and then got married while you were working, you would have been faster because the bills would have started piling up. Yeah. That's what happened to me. Could you know, be. if I had thought of that, I'd have found some way to bust up that marriage. I, it never <laughs> occurred to me. Why didn't you tell me? My editor-in-chief says the same thing. I'm glad you get married because you'll yeah. be putting out more Producing work. Producing more work. And it, Wait, it do was you partially mean you, true. You need money more when you're single? I never thought of that. <laughs> when, you're, when you're planning to get married. You know. Well, there's more really? spare time, more free time when you're single. Son of a gun. <laughs> and plus, nobody's spending your money for you. And she's going to kill me when she sees it. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry. The chances worry are it. nobody will ever see this video today. <laughs> and we're all safe. We're all safe. She's going to shoot me, though. Yeah. Now, let me ask you one thing. Of all the strips you've drawn, I want to ask both of you this. You haven't drawn quite as many, but you've still been around a while, and you're doing some magnificent stuff. Johnny, you first. What are your favorite? Do you have a favorite? I mean, what type of strips do you like the best? Uh... Oh, I would have loved to have done Terry and the Pirates. Really? So that, that goes back to my childhood. Because yeah. as a child, Terry it was the, a strip you oh, loved, I just right? used to dive into Terry and the Pirates yeah. every Sunday Milton and Connecticut. stay there for three hours. Yeah. Uh, I absorbed him through my pores. Uh, <laughs> Daredevil. I think Daredevil was probably the most natural. Because yeah. even though six years of Spider-Man and four years on the strip, I never felt quite at home with Spider-Man. I always felt like it was someone else's strip. Because you didn't start it. And uh, Well, I didn't start Daredevil, but for some reason, Daredevil was more natural to me. That was probably the most natural. Story. Maybe it's because the guy who started it drew it in such a different style and only did the one, you know, Bill Everett, Bill he only Everett, did the right. one book. Yeah. So then you still felt like you were establishing the style. It could be. Uh, uh, Wally Wood had sort of set the pace there, yeah, but I, yeah. I, I did. I felt a little bit. Because yeah, nobody had control. really established the definitive I my, yeah, style. I was myself you. a read, uh, media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, incidentally, I might add that when you mentioned you worked on the strip, you're referring to the Spider-Man newspaper strip, which you did for a million years also before you uh, left me to wallow <laughs> by myself in this thing. How about you, Johnny? What, what are your favorite type of I, strips? The, the only the favorite type, I, I don't know. As far as the, the favorite things that I've done is the stuff I'm going to do because I'm not the really... The favorite things you've done is the stuff you're going to do. Yeah. I can see why you haven't been on too many talk shows. <laughs> <laughs> only because I'm not... Everything I've done has always been a room for been room for improvement. I, I see so many things that I can do uh, 
now well, you're but not I couldn't do become yesterday. A perfectionist like no, him and I, miss your everything I've done, still I feel like fast. everything I've done, I feel like I could have done better. So yeah. I'm going to say the stuff I'm about to do is going to be my my favorite stuff. I guess the Punisher stuff because I'm doing it now. I'm happy with. I'm more comfortable with this character than any character I've done before. Uh, I guess I could say the Punisher, and he's uh, he's Italian, which is great because I have a little inroad into that character. So <laughs> I know how people draw. I know what noses look like. A couple of busted <laughs> noses, and uh, so I, if I had to pick somebody, I'd say the Punisher now, and. Um, but I, I still say the stuff I'm going to do is, is going to be better than anything I've done, only because I'm, I'm getting better as I get older. Way. Yeah, and yeah. I'm glad you feel that way, because it's so great after having done a lot of things to be that enthusiastic about the new things. I can't wait to, to see what happens the next yeah. time, because I do things from one day better than I did the day before, just because you've been alive that's 24 right. hours longer. So uh, I learn, I have, still have so much to learn, it's, it's ridiculous. And that's the exciting part about it. So when I'm 95 years old, maybe, I'll be satisfied <laughs> maybe you'll with have it. Done. You'll keep at I'll it until you get it. Yes, and he also adds an element of design. Uh, that uh, and me as a, as a human figure artist, uh, I drink. Of, I think of human beings first. Uh, he designs the pages and the panels mm. with a lot more uh, punch and I know a lot what you more. Mean. Yeah. And I think uh, in books like this, the Hearts of Darkness book, well, with, with all a tremendous imagination at work and, and all sorts of That's varieties uh, of uh, of uh, creations and uh, demonic stuff. I think uh, the, the generation that John represents. Uh, is a Jim demonic the generation. Yeah. <laughs> they do a lot of this uh, very strong imaginative stuff, and I think it's, uh, it's very good, very popular. Too. Well, obviously. Tell you what, we've been talking about artwork for a while. How about a little demonstration from both of you? And I've got an idea that may be wacky, but let's try it. What do you say okay. we get over to that the drawing board? That sounds good to me. Okay. okay? Yep. Hey, well, here we are at the famous Comic Book Greats drawing board, which, of course, one day will be... Uh, deeded to the Smithsonian Institution. And I've been thinking, I was just wondering, since both of you draw and both of you ink, wouldn't it be fun if you penciled a face, a figure, whatever, and you ink it, Johnny, and then, Johnny, if you pencil something and your dad inks it. I'm glad I thought of that. <laughs> and we'll be able to get a feeling of the different styles and how you work and so forth, and it'll keep us going for a few minutes. Maybe he could ink everything I do, yeah. so fix it. Now, John Sen Senior, they tell me, yes. they tell me that you have been known to draw an attractive female once or twice in the past. And I know you must be bored with these very muscular superheroes. So, as a favor, do you think you could handle an attractive woman that would kind of <laughs> fill us all with awe and admiration? <laughs> A mu uh, handle a muscular, attractive woman, right? The Whatever. No bodybuilding today. Yeah, I think uh, there are some tips to be learned about uh, drawing women. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, that a lot of young artists fail to do is uh, is to keep females uncluttered and to keep their lines uh, graceful and smooth, even if it's. Uh, Make, make the lines dark enough or the camera oh, will yeah. catch. And if okay. the camera misses one of your lines, <laughs> I won't sleep tonight, because those lines okay. are precious. Now, go ahead and tell us about the you uncluttered women, lines. But you draw women because you're cologne, Dad, so don't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the thing is that uh, there's a symmetry and, a, and a, a simplicity that's necessary with women. It must be adhered to. Otherwise, you end up with uh, a lot of bony, uh, 5 o'clock shadow uh, women. Uh, I think <laughs> most young artists just are so used to drawing powerful beings and, and uh, horses and uh, uh, spaceships, and that they, they sort of neglect the, uh, the business of, of drawing women. And I think uh, that they have to, they have to be consciously, conscious of, of the simplicity and yet the, the interesting silhouette. And that's what I generally put into this stuff. If I've gained any kind of uh, uh, recognition, uh, drawing women. It's because I've, I've managed to keep that, uh, that simple premise in mind. You they could do this for a living, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, want to, I, I, I want to tell you, I am so glad you're doing this, because there are so many people who have never seen the women you do, and who may have thought I was exaggerating when I was talking. <laughs> he does women, boy. Oh, I got to tell you. <laughs> you know, one of the reasons I realized that I was so fond of my wife was she always reminded me of a Romita drawing. <laughs> now, that's interesting, because I, I, when I was a kid and watched Milton Kniff's uh, female uh -huh. characters, uh -huh. I, I thought of them as live creatures. And I, I mean, I would fall in love with them, yeah. and I would, uh, I would care whether they lived or died. And it was, uh, it's the kind of a thing that uh, stays with you. I mean, my formative years, my early teens, when Milton Kniff was doing Terry and the Pirates, all of his female characters were tremendously important characters. Well, now I'm going to tell a little secret. Yeah. I, your family has told me 
this is a little known Romita secret. <laughs> when the dragon lady was uh, died, nobody told you because they were afraid it would be too traumatic a shock <laughs> to you. And, and I think that was very That's nice. That's not too far from the truth <laughs> because Kniff used to do that, uh, which something that you and I did at later, later mm -hmm. years, killed off a major character in Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, when Kniff had a, a female character die, I re that was the first time I was aware that people on the street would discuss comic characters, and they would mention that. And, but uh, you were a little tacky. I mean, wearing black for the next six months was <laughs> going too far. Did you, did, is it true you, you saw a lady in, Man in Manhattan that was like the basis for Mary Jane, or is that just a joke? Uh, are no. Are you kidding me? You mean Stan or me? No, either one of you. I don't know. I thought I heard that story. No, once. actually, uh, he, left, uh, he left it rather open to me uh, how to interpret her. Actually, I think I based her partially on uh, Anne Margaret. Yeah, that's uh, right. I used Anne Margaret uh, dimples and a cleft in the chin yeah. and some of the uh, full, full face smile that she had because we were trying to make a girl that was very uh, with it and very modern. And, John, uh, do you remember? Do you remember that it started out where Gwen Stacy was Spider-Man, Peter Parker's girlfriend? Yes. And we planned he'd eventually marry her. Yes. And then we introduced Mary Jane into the strip. And it was as though they were living creatures. We couldn't make Gwen as interesting as Mary Jane. Yes. Mary Jane took over the strip. But that and was Gwen the, was gorgeous, too. That was, yeah. that was the way it was supposed to be. She was no, supposed to be we the hadn't planned no. it that way. No, no, Stan, actually, it was a time you were saying, let's see if we can make Gwen outshine Mary Jane. And we couldn't. And you kept accusing me of, of <laughs> doing Mary my Jane's... favorite character better than your favorite character. <laughs> and I could not manage to make, I remember, I couldn't make Gwen... Uh, have as much verve That's and right. excitement about her because she was more reserved and more mature. She was the typical ingenue, and Mary Jane had all that life and that spark, and we kept saying, we've got to do something to make Gwen yeah. just as right. appealing, exactly. and we couldn't do it. We couldn't oh, and that, do it. that dialogue back in the 60s was just, oh, you, you <laughs> face it, tiger, you hit the jackpot. <laughs> that panel, do you know that the competition has used that same panel in stories? I've noticed it in other yeah. books. Yeah, they've done a takeoff on yeah, it. I ho oh, it was an intentional takeoff? I think so. I well, think it was sort of, flattered. or just maybe face, in, an little insider. Little face a, yeah. a, face of, faces. a face of what? Of, of Gwen? whomever. I'm just do a face of Gwen? Listen, do we really, oh yeah, Gwen, I do. Okay. Do we really want uh, John Jr. to ink this? I mean, do you trust him with this? <laughs> uh, this is you know too what? good. I don't have to ink this, but if I pencil something, I'd like him to save it. So maybe we can have him ink mine. <laughs> All right. If, if you want me to try and that's help why when you that's why I did a, a Spider-Man um, annual that you inked that yeah. Roger, Roger Stern wrote, and we created another black character named Mar oh, Captain right. Marvel. Captain Marvel, a female version. Who was of supposed Captain to be Marvel. Pam Greer? You know Pam Greer, sure, the actress. Sure. Sure. I was supposed to do the black uh, actress. Yes, yeah. and I was supposed to do her. Uh, we didn't yeah. get a chance uh, to get the exact likeness, but by the time he had inked it, it uh -huh. everything was fixed. It was amazing. All my mistakes <laughs> fixed to the point I didn't know I had done anything. Well, that it. was still in the period when you needed help. <laughs> well, and thanks. I, you never I, told me that when I was working on it. No, you you were you were looking for a little bit of help. I gave it to you. Very no, little help. You told. Oh, you're such a liar. <laughs> you told me it was fine. Oh, this is wonderful. Don't worry, I won't change anything. What do you want me to do? Destroy your confidence when you were 21 years old? You don't want me to do that. Do well, you? you're destroying it now. Now, I, I'm, now I'm really. If tired. anyone wants to know why I have always been a Ramita fan, I think we're seeing it right here. Well, yeah, see, you'll that. notice another. Cl I always had a darker lipstick on Mary Jane, yeah, and that's always right. a very that's pale right. lipstick on Gwen. She was a lady, and Mary Jane was a sort of a tramp. Yeah. <laughs> well, I never thought of her that you way. You base her on anybody you know? Just well, you're talking about Peter Parker's <laughs> wife now. Can we just stop tape and do this over again? <laughs> you know, I, this is this is great. My wife uh, comes up in a character that I, that I designed in, uh -huh. in Daredevil. Her name is Typhoid Mary. And people <laughs> oh, say, I love that character. People ask brilliant. me, where'd you get the idea for Typhoid Mary? Yeah. So when my, wife, my wife came out of the, the bathroom ready for work one day. She had one of them high-shouldered outfits on. Her hair was out like this. That was it. So Typhoid Mary is based on my wife. And, you know, <laughs> oh, she's a, you know, schizophrenic, you know, homicidal maniac. Well, no, that part. <laughs> She's going to love this when she sees no, it. No, yeah. that character is based she knows on her about visually. That. Yeah. Because yeah. That in she order knows to cre about. creating a beautiful character is easy from photographs. But I said, this has got to be a live thing. I, I was in the, ver in the process of creating a character visually. Uh -huh. And she comes walking out of the bathroom with this great outfit on. <laughs> and uh, she has carried a couple of uh, uh, machetes at times. So I figured this is a great, <laughs> great reason to put her in there. Well, well, let me ask you now. Which one, Johnny, uh, of yeah. these do you want to ink? <laughs> the face or the figure? Uh, humana, 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 humana. I'll do the face just for time's sake, all right? All right, great. Okay. And then you'll do, do a face and you're dead it. Hey, okay. I got to tell you, that's just beautiful. 
Well, and tell me, you can do this. What He'll can, destroy it. He'll, what can he'll he absolutely say? ruin it. Go ahead. And you inking care. is not my forte. <laughs> you want to use, use this? And now you're do, I get, do I get a critique as I'm doing this? Well, I'll tell you when, you make, when you're going off. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. And this is this stupid, this stupid wrist of mine. I have to do things so butt backwards. What's the matter with your wrist? I broke you it when it? I was very That's young. Good. Oh. That's good. Yeah, from patting yourself on the back ever since you started getting these strips to do. <laughs> <laughs> now I fell off the monkey bars oh, in Dick Van Patten's backyard. Really? Yes. Yeah. My claim to fame. Hey, uh, speaking of getting strips to do, didn't you once do some layouts on the Spider-Man newspaper strip? Yes, I did. Yeah. And you didn't remember it the week after I did it, Stan. Uh -huh. I came walking down the hall. What are you working on lately, Jenny? <laughs> Stan, I just did a couple of issues. Well, that's I've probably never... because I never told him you did it. I kept I... all <laughs> credit to myself. <laughs> I've that... never been known for my memory. That was with Dr. Doom in it in the UN, if you remember that. Yeah, the that first was... sequence. Yeah. Right. That, that was, was a... such a great story. I've always wanted to redo that or yeah. reprint it. I really enjoyed doing that. It was a real pleasure. We had uh, all sorts of uh, all-star international characters, yeah, Indira yeah. Gandhi in there. That's and, right. I didn't do that stuff for you guys. I put Sadat <laughs> in there. I don't think Sadat was no, at I... the UN, but I put him in there, I think. Well, that was... Well, you, you we were, were lazy. You put in whoever you could draw. <laughs> and, and doing that drawing was what caused him to get shot, so yeah. you, know, you should feel bad about that. As long as they didn't shoot the artist. <laughs> yeah, they, couldn't, they didn't know where Johnny lived, so they got Sadat. <laughs> well, I must admit, you're not doing a bad job, youngster. Yeah. He has a modicum of talent. The kid. Yeah, I'd say so. I'm not used to using He's brushes. He's got a future. <laughs> well, I want to say the strips that Johnny Jr. has been doing are just great, because I've been seeing them. How do you sign your... Uh, I keep forgetting. How do you sign your name? J.R. 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 I'm not really a junior, actually. This is not that important. You're not going to lose any sleep over it. But I'm a John S. I'm a John S. and he's a John V. But oh, so that means it's not a junior. It's the middle it's initial right. is... I yeah. see. But I we had so that. many Johns in the office when I was working up on yeah. staff. There it's was John McCorton and John... J.R. John yeah. 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 I call him Junior. So now it, you, oh, you sign a J.R.J.R. JR. Yeah. yeah, which is, you know, it's really easy to sign it, and it's fun. That's a guy who's real conceited. He does it twice. <laughs> <laughs> so good a name, they named it twice, I know. I got to tell you, you're really doing JR justice. J.R.J.R. from New York, yeah. New York. <laughs> you're doing justice to that. That's beautiful. I don't think so. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, your dad never did either, so it's okay. You've got to let yourself go with the flow, like, like uh, Luke Skywalker. How would, you, how would you be critiquing this if you were, Johnny? Uh, I would just tell him uh, to don't use less camera. lines on the blonde hair. And, and don't work like on that. camera, is what you should tell me to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah. still like it more si more uh, simple and open. Well, right? still, you have to do it. When you're working on large expanse like that, you don't have much choice, even with blondes. Yeah. And also, this is, I'm just not real good with a brush at this point. I'm better with a pen. Yeah. Or I can tell you what we're going to do. Somebody is going <laughs> to, you're going to write JR, JR in the corner. Yeah. Okay. And you know what I'm leading up to, of course. Yeah. And then you'll owe me some money, because when I take this home to frame it, I'll just send you the bill. And, Johnny, you're going to write whatever the heck it is you write. Right. I'm just going to write. Now you're going to see a signature. Now you're going to see one. Look at that. Is that there modest? Just Unbelievable. Simple Romeo, just <laughs> low key. And, Can that, I catch? and that is not my age. That is, <laughs> that is the year. Stan, should two. I put red on this? No, red, red really bothers you. You don't have to. I'll always remember. <laughs> Okay, now, if you guys would switch, we'll have Junior right, so have do this, who is do not a, a junior. All right, He's going to pencil something. Right. Not really. J.R. J.R. is going to pencil. John, not really junior. Okay. Right. And Lord knows what it is he's going to pencil. I don't know what I'm going to I don't even think you know at this moment, do you? No. I see glue on the pencil, so I'll never put it down. <laughs> um, what happens if you can't think of anything and we sit here and the tape is rolling? Tequila. <laughs> pencil. Okay. <laughs> We're going to take a trip to Mexico, is that what you said? Oh, yeah. You both hold the pencil the same way. You hold it way like a typical artist's loose sketching method, right? Well, it's just to give you a, a base to start with, and then you get crazy afterwards. That's a trick that John Buscema taught us, so that you don't get too finicky with your first lines. Mm. And then if you get something you don't like, you just do a little harder line over it, and it disappears, and the best part, the best line comes out. I always figure the way you guys draw is so easy. I mean, you put a lot of lines down, then you look at them, whichever one you, looks right, you that's the line, right, right? You pick out the ones that I are mean, closest to what you want. Who, uh, who couldn't do that? Well, you remember, <laughs> that's what they said about uh, Michelangelo. They said, uh, how do you do a sculpture of, of say, David? Yeah, right, say, right. Cut away everything that doesn't look like <laughs> doesn't David, doesn't look right? like it, right. Now, that's a paraphrase. It's usually another, it's about an elephant. I got to tell you, I thought what you were doing was this was a big hat, a sombrero, and that was the brim, and this was going to be a figure, <laughs> and it was going to be some guy taking ah, a nap. What do you know? Shows what a great art director I am. <laughs> 
That's right. You were art director at a point. Yeah, you, you covered every single job, didn't you? Yeah. Now you see what we were up against. Trying, <laughs> trying to get him to, to... Oh, I'm telling you the things he said about you, Stan. Legitimate. I'm telling you. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> it couldn't have been easier. A... It was so easy to be an art director with guys like Johnny working there. I mean, he did the work. I took the credit. We had the greatest arrangement you could have. All right. I'm not supposed to put any expression in the, in the mouth. Does that what Will Eisner said? Eyes have all the expression? Well, now he meant they have a great deal of expression, but certainly you, can, you get you a can, lot with the mouth. You can curl a lip if you... <laughs> Like Elvis. Without Elvis, we'd never have curled lips in comics. Don't look so complacent about this, uh, Romita, because you're going to have to ink You get this. to save this. So you better hope that this will be good. Yeah. And inkable. <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking to himself, why doesn't he simplify right, Should I put a big it? gun in this to Am drive me even more crazy? Well, we want to get some, some foreshortening in there to show the young artists how, how to get out of the curse of the two I have advice for young artists. Don't Take eat, another field. Don't eat fried foods. <laughs> Stay away from them. They'll kill you. Tell them what you mean by foreshortening, Johnny. Well, some, uh, foreshortening is a, is a drawing trick that uh, mm -hmm. enables comic artists to, to uh, uh, simulate the depth in a, in a, in a scene. Uh, one of the hardest problems comic artists have is to defeat that illusion, of that two-dimension two limit, and to get that three-dimension uh, uh, on the figure so that the reader feels like he's looking in on an actual yeah. scene instead of a picture of a scene. Weren't you saying earlier, uh, just before we started taping, that the most, and, and I'd like you to um, amplify this if you would, one of the most important things is to take these two-dimensional drawings and make them three-dimensional in some way? Yeah, I think that's the biggest challenge that a young com mm -hmm. comic artist has to face and, and defeat. He has to find a way to convince yeah. a reader that he's not looking at just a drawing of something, that he's looking at something happening. Once you get a reader to believe that, they start to care what happens instead of just saying subconsciously, this is just a drawing, nobody's getting hurt, don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. That's the first thing I tell young artists is you've got to get that illusion down pat. That somebody's getting hurt. Well, that, that's, <laughs> that something <laughs> Our is happening. A bloodthirsty friend over there. So that you don't, you don't have this complacency. Know what you mean. Yeah. Once you think you're, once you remember you're in a movie theater and somebody is getting uh, a shot, say, on the screen, mm -hmm. and you're just aware that it's a film and that there's a director off camera, uh, there's no there's no caring but if you forget you're in a theater and somebody is getting shot and you care what happens to that character that's the illusion you're after and that's what we're after in comics I, that's every time i've drawn a page i've always imagined the scene that i'm doing as a movie scene yeah just because i can imagine what is the next stage if i, I get i guess i i over uh, tell a story sometimes if the guy's walking across the street i like to see him stepping down off the curb crossing the center line so on and so forth and I learned that from him and the editor-in-chief I had at the time when I was working on, on, the, on my first books. And I kind of, ever since then, I've worked that way, almost cinematically. Yeah. Imagine I have to establish a certain scene. I don't think there's enough backgrounds in comics these days. I think guys cheat too much. And I don't, I don't name names, but I tend to put maybe too, much background, too many backgrounds in. But I'd like to imagine that somebody says, I know where we are. We're in the middle of, middle of Manhattan. Uh -huh. That's a crowded street. And uh -huh. I managed to put in every car and every person in that scene. And my anchors hate my guts for it. But... I can't help it. I want to be able to believe it myself. And if I well, can't no, believe that's it myself... A good, that's a good point. And it's interesting when you compare it to movies because I cannot tell you how, ever since I've moved to Los Angeles and I've become Joe Hollywood, and, <laughs> you know, I keep talking to people in the movie business, and they are so impressed with comics, and they themselves feel that comics are so akin to, to motion pictures. You know, I remember at New York University in New York once, they had a... They probably still do. They taught a film course... And they used a Spider-Man story that you had drawn, yes. that I had written, yeah. and it was in their textbook, the whole story, and they gave examples of the camera angles and cuts and breaks and so forth based on that story. One of the most satisfying uh, times of our, of our careers because I think uh, that was one of the biggest compliments mm -hmm. I was ever given because they, they did not discuss anything except the variety of, of shots, angles, yeah. uh, close-ups, long shots, and I think... Uh, that was probably my, my uh, finest moment in comics. Yeah. No, I would think being here today is uh, well, undoubtedly... Up, up to now. That, was my <laughs> finest moment. What well, could ever top this? That's what a comic book artist <laughs> okay. is, is a director in a movie as far as... Now, I'm Johnny, concerned. what have you drawn here? I'm looking at it I don't upside know. down. I'm but I'm going to ask him to save it, though. Oh, great. It, it, this That's is someone punisher. like the Punisher. It is someone like the Punisher. Some reasonable facsimile. Now, I would say, because just to prove what a good art director I am and how I can analyze these things so acutely, I would say that this fellow is angry and he's <laughs> attempting to cause some sort of bodily harm 
to somebody for whom he has an intense dislike. <laughs> yeah. Would you say that's an accurate uh, I, I, interpretation? I think uh, he's intending to cause bodily harm even if he doesn't <laughs> dislike the person. Good point. I think uh, uh, John is now going to probably chastise what? me for making no. change. <laughs> hold it, hold it one Are second. Are you going to change something? Your son has made a very graceful curved line right. like We've that. We've been you, heads over this for right. You, on years. the other hand, right. have I'm done an art something director. Like Remember, that. I'm an art director. I didn't I can't change anything on Gwen's face. Don't change <laughs> now, anything. Now, what is the reason for doing this rather than Because he's the art director, Stan. Well, I'll tell you, Frank, that's what Klaus Janssen would have done. <laughs> <laughs> But this looks better too. Yeah, it looks right. more violent. Oh, yeah. right. yes. It has right. more excitement. Been doing to me. Yes. It looks right. wonderful. Yeah. Except let's just change this. Let's you fix... see, some guys don't need a red shirt to generate excitement. <laughs> all right, all right. I should never have worn this shirt. I know right. it was a big mistake. Now, you see, it, watching your wife dad made work me wear is it. an education, an absolute education. Well, this kind of inking uh -huh. is known as broad brush inking. And it covers up a lot of defects. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, so I have defects in my shirt. No, and I needed his inking to right. Okay, all yeah. right. <laughs> and this, base, this is based on the Japanese brush style. Stroke. Stroke. Right. Stroke. Right. Uh, I and did, you're doing it I was well. very yeah. much influenced by a Japanese uh, what instructor. What was that guy's name? I don't remember, but he was on PBS way back. And since that time, I have had a constant influence. Of, Johnny, I've the, never seen you ink like this. Uh, you have mean I, for speed? You? No, no, I don't no. think you have. <laughs> I've never seen you ink fast in my life. Right. Why didn't you do it when you were working with me? But no, I mean, I've never seen you use this Japanese style, have No, I? right, uh, because most of, of the gun, time, it's most of the time I only do it when we do sketches. And most it's of the time great. he has to work like yeah. this when he works. It's actually uh -huh. not a bad... If I were to do my own publication yeah. someday, I think I would try it this way. Uh, when, I, when I do regular comics, I feel a little bit constrained to do when it you, tighter. When you did Captain America and the Falcon... In the, the, the 67, was you were doing like it as fast as you could possibly do it. Big you were brush. knocking out. Yes, I that was the big brush. fast stuff. Yes. You were doing it real quick. Exactly. There's a lot of truth to that. You ran out of ink. Do I have to one? do the, the uh, no, you don't spider legs on the hair? <laughs> you know, I'm so glad you're doing this because ever since you've been art director at Marvel, which seems to me like the past thousand years, <laughs> you haven't been doing as much artwork as much as many strips no it's true and there are so many younger readers who you know that you're a name but they don't know you they don't know what you've done i think that you mentioned something before about his stuff not not being uh on the cutting edge that's only because he hasn't done anything that's like. exactly well, i think that he would be exactly right back where right. he was supposed to be if he i mean yeah. when i see this now i think it's the greatest thing because anybody watching this is going to say stop art directing and start drawing strips <laughs> will you <laughs> well i have had requests to get out of the office and go back, <laughs> yeah, by go back to the freelance By your writer. boss, get out of here. I think Tom DeFalco would love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, uh, I am not looking for tight deadlines and uh, short deadlines and, uh, and long hours. I am uh, very content to have a nine to five job. Uh, I still do too much work on weekends as it is. But I must admit you're doing something good because you are helping and teaching so many new artists. Yeah, we have that training, that uh, still apprentice teaching me. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of one John Romita, we're getting hundreds of whoever they may be yeah. that have been trained by you. <laughs> so if there's a consolation in it, it would be that, right? Yeah. But I must admit, just for sentiment and for selfishness, man, would I like to be doing a strip with you. We should be doing something together, Stan, yes. that's true. If I weren't so lazy and you weren't so busy, we mm. would do it. Well, I could always unbusy myself. <laughs> I would try to for you. In fact, you can you unlazy yourself? You're any, not lazy. Anybody watching this cassette, if in the future you and I do something, They'll say, they will know this is where it this started. This is the moment, right. Do you know what a collector's item is? <laughs> oh, man, forget about the table being at the Smithsonian. Yeah. Why, that cassette. Hang on to them. Go out and buy a dozen more because you're looking at a piece of history. That was the birth, the birth <laughs> of a... Right. We, we could do it, Stan. We, I mean, something like the Femazons. Uh, do you remember should... the Femazons? Yeah. Oh, man. We still may get a movie out of that. There have been people that were interested in doing <laughs> oh, that. Oh, boy, I'd movie. love to hear I'd That was a strip that. that Johnny and I did years ago about a society in the future that was ruled by women. And Never the happened. men were subservient. Was, men were slaves. Yeah, right? and there was an underground movement. There was one woman who sided with the men. Yeah. She wasn't so dumb. Right. And there was one heroic guy who didn't want to be a slave, and the two of them conspired. And it was written so dramatically, well, by my favorite author, yeah. but it was drawn by Johnny, and those women were so gorgeous. It was done in black and white, wasn't it, for a book yeah, called Savage right. Tales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did it in tone. Yeah. Do you still have copies of it? Uh, I have I, the original art just sold. I just sold the original art to somebody last year. Uh-huh. 
but uh, I still have some copies. It oh, was good. Savage well, Tales them. number one. Yes, yeah, save them, yeah. because sooner or later, I'm going to meet one movie producer of great vision and <laughs> taste, and who knows. I uh, want to do a Spider-Man thing with you guys, Spider-Man job with you guys. I want to pencil it, and you can ink it. Oh, I think maybe, been, maybe you could write it if we've you yeah, you've been feel so inclined. That. We've you talked about that, that for years, right? Yeah, you think you'll ever, we'll ever get it done? I <laughs> well, I'm always available. I can always find an hour. He's got new boots, huh? No, no. Oh well, he's got boots. biker boots on. I, whatever you want to do, see, oh, that's yeah. my. Oh, you had him folded I, down. Yeah, I, I that's missed all right. It. Okay. You're the art director. You should know this, Mr. Yeah. Technical over here. No, he's uh, he's I right. I slop something down and you fix it. That's that's my kind of job. I like that. Johnny, I've never seen you wink. You know, the only time I remember seeing you wink like this. Do you remember that strip we did a million years ago in a book called Menace, about the guy who puts a hood on his head? And he can't get it off. Yeah. We, it seems to me, as I remember, that was inked like this, kind of yes. with heavy yes. strokes and dark black. Were you yeah. right, did you write the, the Captain America stuff he did? Some of it. Yeah. The, Maybe I mean, most way of back. It. The he stuff did it he all. first did. Yeah, I think I wrote most of it. Oh, the first, the first you mean stuff, the, the when ones in the, in the 50s. 50s? Yeah. Well, he wrote, I mean, he wrote the other one, too. Yeah. Yeah. Stan, right? I think he yeah. wrote. Yeah, he was one. doing it. I really have trouble remembering what I wrote. Now, I have to look. Somebody <laughs> will show me a story, and I have to look at the first page to see if my name is on it. Right. And even then, I remember there were some that I didn't sign my name on, so I can't remember. If it looks real good, I figure I did it, and who's, who's going to know? <laughs> oh, hey, that's great. Okay. Now, wait, you left you out. You put your name on top. Don't you need another speed line there? No, no. You want to keep that. that How illuminated? many art directors do we have at this table? And, and you don't even want to bother with a gun with a little finishing the No, that's arrow. your... See, that's where... <laughs> We this were forced to go darker, and that should be nice and, and illuminated, a, a white Oh, streak. I see. It's because there's a burst here. Right. So you, I've got it. See, what's throwing me off is the penciling underneath. Oh, now, right. when I take this right. home and frame it, and I'll send you the bill for the framing, right. when I take it home and frame it, should I erase the penciling, or should yeah, I leave it the I way would. it is? No, no, you don't want to erase this pen. Yeah, you can erase some parts, like there. And yeah. leave the rest of it on there. Well, how would I know which parts to erase <laughs> the and parts which that, to leave? The parts that look like they're cluttering up the light source. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, we should say this to Stan. Oh, oh that's Stan? really great. Oh, you get this? What do I get from you, Stan? Um, you get the right to appear here in front of the entire world oh, boy. to be seen and appreciated and heralded <laughs> okay. and applauded, lauded, and to receive your You should be a writer, Stan. <laughs> Someday, maybe. <laughs> hey, this is just terrific. All right, I've gotten my uh, fee, I and now I'm going to go home. Look, you guys, you've got about another few minutes to fill. Do whatever you want. Okay. You know what? We'll do, we'll do a little pin-up. Actually, what do you think we ought to do for, let's say, the next five minutes before we knock off? How about if you, draw, you, feel you like draw something, Stan, and I'll write. How about that? Um, remember you used to do those uh, drawings yeah, on the backs I, of pages? I remember, but I don't have my right <laughs> ear implement with me. Wait a minute, really. how about if I, I draw five lines and you make something out of it? Hey, yeah, that, sounds that, game? that sounds good. You, no, know you, you put mean. the five lines down. And no, no, don't trust him. He's dangerous. Remember that game? At the party, you throw five lines down somewhere and make it. Oh, boy. Now, you see, he's... He's, he's, I want being, to make it easy he's being for you. soft on us. <laughs> you want to well, try I get that? that one? Wait a second. Yeah. Can we do that? Why not? Oh, you see, he's clever. He turned it to his own devices. A little cartoon. Yeah. All right, so he's got a stupid hat. Son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Too much expression as to Too without, much, right, right. Will right. Eisner wouldn't like it. <laughs> You've all got to get the Will Eisner interview to know what he's talking about. <laughs> I am a pretty good cartoonist, right? I'm telling you, Stan, you know, great he, layouts. He, great layouts, Stan. He was easy on you. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's why cheating. Why don't again. you do one for your dad to do? Make it tough. Go ahead. Make it tough? That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Give I'm it a shot. One to do this. Wait, Wait, I'm I'm always... me, let me take this one out of your way. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up in... in uh... Abject, Clear the field. In abject uh -huh. fear. Art party, right? Right. There we go. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now that's cruel. Yeah. That's in that go rotten. Ahead. That's pretty easy. I it's would say. gravel girl. I see the whole drawing. <laughs> that's not a line. That's well. That's all right. That's four, right? Yeah. Press hard right, enough. I, I want. I want everybody to see. Get every a better line. pencil on that. You're running out of lead Very on that. Very funny. Very funny. <laughs> You're running out of lead on that one. Yeah. Yeah, right, let me try yeah, they're all running out of lead. I got a sharpener. Someday when we do I got a Brooklyn sharpener here, guys. It is going to be. There we go. Someday I'll when show, we do a big do budget interview, we're going to have a pencil sharpener. I'll we don't you, use... I'll we'll show you. Who's going to sweep this up? You want to see how to be how to be clever, John? Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Bensonhurst sharpener, guys. And I don't want to see the guy have to clean this mess up. Oh, well, this, this is just Veronica showed. Lake with glasses. Yeah, don't mess around with Dad. I can see that. That's great. That's really great. You can't fool the old fox. 
<laughs> oh, that's not fair. You're what? showing up your son on camera here, Ace. <laughs> I Just hope there are some people life. who weren't too young to know who Veronica Lake was, but she was a This is what she looked like with the hair on her eyes. Hair that way, right. yeah. Right. yeah. Actually, we've got characters in comics that I should yeah. have pro more properly have used the comic reference. Yeah, this is There great. have been characters in the, in the uh, many of the strips. Everything the that's being over. done has been done before, and it's been right. done based on you guys, you trust go. me. Johnny, we have a couple of minutes more. Who wants to just draw <laughs> a great villain's face? Just make up a villain. Make up a villain? Yeah. Need another piece of paper? Thank there you, you go. You're a peach. <laughs> no sacrifice is too great. Want to design a villain? Yeah, let's design a villain. All right, should we have a patch? Uh, I'll well, leave one that I, to you. There's a character called Unokyo that I created. Uh -huh. I created Unokyo. Well, based, on a, based on some Don in New York City. <laughs> so I like the idea of having one eye. So let's give him one eye. You want to just have the eye sewn, sewn up? <laughs> like top eye? You guys can finish talking. There won't be time to draw right, the picture. Right. Draw! You want to make him old or young? Any way you like. You're the boss. I just want to kill a little time here. Yeah. Oh, well, we're running out of... Uh, creating, a we character, a of creating a character is a very interesting exercise for comic artists. They do it sometimes uh, 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 absent-mindedly, but always. All of the, all of the years of experience uh, that uh, have come into all the characterization they've done comes to bear in this kind of situation. You say, I've got, I've got to do two pages today. I, have, I don't have time to go doing character sketches, so you do it on the fly uh -huh. many times. Secondary characters, not always main characters. But, uh... All so right, you, so you got one eye closed. Yeah. yeah. How John, come you, uh, villains always have bony noses? I don't understand that. Is that why are to? villains always ugly? No, a lot of them aren't. Uh, All right, so he's a handsome, bony-faced guy <laughs> with, a, with one eye. Yeah. I, um... It's even oh, more insidious. I had true. more fun doing... Fu Manchu, not Fu Manchu, what's his name? Oh, the claw. Uh, no. The yellow claw. claw? No. Look at this. I'm uh, running out of... I know who you mean. The Mandarin. The Mandarin. I did the Mandarin oh, in I Iron Man. I remember that. And he had been done so many Mandarin. times before, but because he has a little beard and he's got yeah. the stash and he's got those eyes... But you made him got... fairly good looking. That was fun. A lot of yeah. things for you to play with. He didn't look like Ming the Merc Merciless under So, your... you know, that's what I'm ending up doing here. <laughs> I'm doing yeah. the Mandarin here. <laughs> You're not unproud of your son's prowess, artistic no, I, prowess, I, I, are you, Johnny, huh? Uh, knowing how uh, dangerous it was for him to get into the business that his father was in, yeah. and how many chances he took, oh, I got I'm very lucky and very proud, back. because a lot of young fellows try to do what their fathers do and don't succeed, and it's a very right. dangerous situation. Why do you fight me on it all the time? I don't understand it. Well, well I didn't he want doesn't you to want risk you to get it. that much better than he is. <laughs> <laughs> he says, "Going well, to it's too late for that now. I'm afraid, <laughs> too late." Why did you become an artist? Because I can't sing and dance, right? <laughs> and. We're going to give you a stand-up routine also, and this yeah. is only the beginning. But don't bump. I didn't realize you were auditioning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was supposed to be Hey, Tony... that's good. That is really good. I was good. supposed to take Tony Danza's spot, but they just, he got there before I did. Uh, <laughs> well, you speak too clearly. <laughs> well, I think nothing can top that, so. Yeah. Unless your dad wants to add another line or something. We've only, got about, make it better. Want We've only got about 50 seconds. Do something. Give well, them a big show. They can go off. While we're inking, right? All right, I guess so. Let them so. go off while we're inking. I'll just put the... Now, is this still that Japanese technique? This is... Yeah, this well, is the... No, this is the... <laughs> this is the sumo set. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah. good. Incidentally, guys, in case we get cut off because the tape runs out at some point, I just want to say now, because I don't want to end it without saying that, what an absolute delight it was having the two... Having... Romita Pear and Romita Fee. I don't know how to say it in Italian. <laughs> that's, right? that's close enough. <laughs> uh, on the show, how proud I am of both of you and how much I've enjoyed this and how happy I am that you've given the world evidence of why you are definitely considered to be two of the comic book greats. And thanks a million for being here with Thank us. Thank you, Stan. It was a pleasure to be here. Thanks. Yes, I imagine it must have been. <laughs> <laughs> that was my line. Yeah. All right, now, since I said the goodbye, you might as well keep drawing. Who knows yeah, how long we'll, it's we'll, going to last. We'll play ourselves. Wait, the lights are dimming. Is that timing? Is that dramatic? Unbelievable. One more second, one more second. I need another minute. <laughs>